Item 8, Corporate Policy Staff Procedure for Handling Frivolous and Vexatious Complaints. Moved by Councillor McFadden. All in favor? Oh, sorry, Councillor Carlson. Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. Going too quick. Uh, yeah, that's no problem. Uh, just a question. I, I, I support the notion. Uh, I can imagine everyone around the table is thinking oh, that's a good idea. But what happens when uh, someone gets their vexatious letter and then they say, well, I'm going to my counselor now? Uh, then it gets bounced up to one of our officers, the mayor's office. And then we say, well, we, I guess we have to look at it because you know, we always follow up with everyone. And then it gets sent back to staff and we go, well, no, that was a vexation or we thought it was frivolous. And I just wonder whether, whether we're into even a greater debate about whether we take the complaint or not. I'm just wondering if you have any thought that through. If, if that letter is the final word on it, then I guess we're, uh, we won't be permitted to interfere with that process. I'm just asking, because I'm sure it would come up. Well, I mean, first of all, I think we wouldn't take any um, decision on this lightly. And my experience has been whenever we get into these endless loops with people who sometimes just don't like the answer, the councillor has been very much involved in the process all the way throughout. So I can't imagine a scenario where we would issue that letter and not have some dialogue with the councillor involved. Uh, and I mean, there are a couple of members of council who, I, who I've been involved with through, you know, issues in, in, with folks in their ward. It's really been through the councillor's office a lot, just as often as it's been through the staff process. So I think we would make a commitment that that would not be done without consultation with, and that we would have a game plan in how to respond. I mean, I think if we all agree that we've reached that point with a particular individual, there should then be a, just a standard response that goes back from everybody, including the councillor's office, that respond, that deals with it. And, and uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I'm assuming that has to do with a certain issue so that this person isn't sort of banned from life uh, for compatible something else. No, if a, if a, if a second or, or subsequent legitimate issue comes up clearly, uh, we would deal with it. I think this the, the report speaks to, you know, the repetitive nature on the same issue or, uh, you know, just, just, I mean, yeah, persistence on the same issue. And that's often what we get involved in where, and I mean, I don't need to tell you because every person at the table has had an experience like that. So I think uh, we're not saying the person can't complain about something else. Uh, and try to get the I'm not sure where calendar or calendar is. I don't know where calendar is. Where calendar is. Uh, uh, the idea of having to pay out your dollars up front to lodge a complaint, although innovative, I don't think it's like, <laughs> it's not something I would want to follow up with, but I'd be kind of interested if anybody got a report on how that work goes. Yeah, so, so I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Thanks very much. It'd be interesting to see how this works out. I do support the change. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Uh, my staff's comment beside this item on the agenda is long overdue, is the comment. Because you can't imagine, uh, I think there's one issue you will remember well, you can't imagine the amount of time spent by my staff because we felt we couldn't say no. And I think the time has come as other municipalities have decided that there comes a time you do say no, no more contacts. I think, uh, think of the number of times we've had people before this council constantly at every meeting complaining about the same thing. And we tolerate, and we have tolerated. I think what we have to assess is the financial implications of the time spent on dealing with and usually a couple of them have come to the mayor's office because the councillor just can't deal with it and the amount of time consumed. But my office has had to deal with it. And I'll tell you, it's very, very time consuming. Very, very time consuming. When, when, my, count, when my staff gets five calls a day from an individual, that's the record. I tell you, it's very time-consuming. And I think it's time that we 
put limitations. There will always be considerations. I know the staff will look at this very carefully because we believe in communication with our citizens and the staff believes in it too. But there comes a time that uh, the cost of the taxpayers is extremely high. And I think that's what we have to take into consideration. But I know that every view consideration will be given as we have done in the past and uh, such. Um, I remember well advising counsel that a person who used to come consistently was move, receive, period, and not discuss it. And that finally discouraged the individual from coming. So if we have to take actions like that. So I think this policy is good. It will be administered with care, as it should be. And uh, I think it's going to benefit the taxpayers financially, because a lot of staff time is used up. Not only in my office, but every call that came through had to go to, to a department to get an answer. So it's not just the time in the mayor's office, it's the time of every department constantly coming back. I think there's one, and I think we should write a book about it. it, it it's excessive. So thank goodness this policy has come forward. Nobody's moved, and I would be happy to move it long overdue. It has been moved. All in favor? Here. And the last one. The frivolous and vexatious complaints. You mentioned that there's one individual that calls you five times a day. Well, there's, yeah, we, we, we've had situations in my office where we've taken over from the counselor because the counselor has said they, they feel they can't deal with it anymore. And so instead of us, instead of them being cut off from calling, uh, the, my office has taken over and responded trying to reduce the uh, impact it has on the staff in the in my office as well as the impact on the staff in the different departments as any complaint that comes uh, nine out of ten have to be referred to a department to comment on so it's a very time consuming and uh, some of the complaints are just nuisance complaints how, how common is it like for you like if all of these even from counselors offices are getting redirected to you how much time is your staff, you know, spending on these things? How common well, is this? Sometimes it, we're spending a lot of time on it, but not only staff in my office, but it means that the staff in all the departments are spending time on it because the item has to be referred to them to investigate. In some cases, the staff has to go out to investigate and then finds out, it finds out that uh, there's no problem. Can you give me one example of like a particularly sort of nuisance complaint? Oh no, it's, uh, it's, uh, sometimes it's all over the place. Just they give me one example. Well, they complain about everything, especially, uh, especially about construction in their area, whether it's road construction or city construction, contract jobs, or whether it's developers in Philly. Can you think of like one that you remember, like someone, no, someone no, complained about something? Too that there's too many. No? There's <laughs> too many that we have to deal with. Yeah. I think this policy is long overdue. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's got to be administered with tender, loving care. There's no question about it. And, you gotta, and I'm sure the staff will do that as well as the counselors will do with it too. But, I mean, you, you got a, a policy like that has to be well monitored and, uh, and very special care has to be applied to it. Very special care. Because nobody wants to cut off a citizen from complaining. You know, we don't want to do it, but there comes a time when it's uh, 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 it's uh, a great pressure on the staff of either the counselor's office or the mayor, and great pressure on the departments for dealing with with. Are, are we talking like in your office sometimes hours a week? Oh, uh, uh, yes, I would say hours a week on some. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I gave you an example that. On one, I know that uh, my staff was called five times in one day. On the, so yeah. it's pretty. I think I think the policy is long overdue, but it must be administered with tender, loving care. Okay. Because we don't want to cut off.
communication with our citizens in any way. So it's got to run its course. And uh, then it comes that, to a point that the decision has to be. I have to. Uh, I've only. I've got less than a minute on this thing. And Nando Unique is going there. Last one. Frivolous and vexatious yeah. complaints. Can you give me one? What's the like the most ridiculous, nonsense, but just a total nuisance yeah, complaint? I, I'm going to give um, Oh, I have all sorts. Give me a really I, good. Um, um, I remember it was many years ago. It was my first year of council. I'll tell you a great story. It was with regards to a woman who tracked me down and was concerned the city of Mississauga was not paying for the replacement of her windows because, as she called them, municipal squirrels had eaten away the wood frames of the windows around her home. And, and I, I don't think that's an obligation of all of the taxpayers, and she wasn't happy with the answer, no, we're not going to pay for your new windows because you think municipal squirrels eroded away the frames. But the bigger point... The what, bigger, what's another good one? Yeah, that's... that's a uh, I'll the, the tell you the main point that comes to okay. mind. I think the bigger theme to that is this. The mayor said, some people just don't take no for an answer. I'll give you another one. Uh, there was one individual who had a municipal boulevard, and years ago a previous owner planted a second tree on the municipal boulevard. Normally the city plants one. This previous owner planted a second one. Beautiful, mature tree. He approached me and saying, Nando, I have two trees. You know, by rights, one is one that we would have planted. Can we cut it down? And we, of course, said, no, the policy is that's a municipal tree now. We're not in the business of cutting trees when we're trying to plant 1.5 million trees. So I apologize. The tree has to remain. Dealt with, gave him his answer, got him an official report from staff. Darn if every year he doesn't call me back, can I cut down the tree? Well, it's a little frivolous. You've gotten your answer. You may not be happy with no. But many constituents never accept that no, and the dialogue just is ongoing, and you can only say no so many times. And How draining is it in terms of you staff have, you, time, you have, you resources, have no, you, you have no your idea. time? You have no idea. It's, it, I, I've seen some of the ones that go to the mayor's office, and it is incessant. It's just constant, and it is. They, they usually fall into that category. It's not that we're trying to put somebody off or obfuscate or not deal with their issue. The issue's been dealt with ad nauseum. Here are the reports, here are the minutes, here are the meetings, here are the emails. Here's every, here you've been to deputate on the matter five times. It's done, this was the decision. No, I wanna raise it again. You know, it, it just is such a burden on the resources that we have, and you've gotta move on and try to help the next constituent who's got a legitimate concern. I've got to run. Thank you. Take care. Good to see you. Take care. Bye-bye.